Welcome into Road to the Draft. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And now we are one week closer to the draft. And a lot of things have happened. You got free agency. You got the combine. And, of course, that can change a lot of the things about what we think different teams are going to want to do, their priorities. Mm -hmm. So now that we know a few of the things that the Bucks are going to have, the pieces that they've brought back or re-signed, right. How do you feel like that's going to affect some of their needs and priorities? Yeah, you have to look at what the Bucks did over the last week in free agency. And, of course, one of the big ones, Mike Evans is back. I, uh, I think I argued on the last one of these that even if Mike Evans came back, the Buccaneers could still target a receiver in the first round. Just, just thinking long term and also maybe a third star to put next to Mike and Chris Godwin. But I do think the addition or, I mean, the return of Mike Evans probably makes that a little less likely and so you're seeing that less in all the mock drafts and there's a million of them uh, in the last week or so but one guy that you've seen I've seen show up in a lot of mock drafts including the one that we just did on Buccaneers.com and it was Brianna Dix who made the pick is Duke interior offensive lineman Graham Barton and this is a guy that played tackle for much of his career uh, at Duke, but also had some action at center. And as we've seen many times, the Buccaneers, Jason Light and his, his crew have been very good at, at uh, finding guys who were tackles in college, but probably project better on the inside um, on the next level. And this is a guy that you could maybe slot in to either guard or center. Of course, Aaron Stinney and Matt Filer are the two guys that covered left guard for the Bucks last year and both are currently free agents and neither of those guys have been resigned yet so that's why I'm saying maybe a little bit more focus on adding a little more strength up front you got Robert Hainsey who started at center the last two years but he's a versatile guy too so you could add a guy like Graham Barton and then figure out how to make them all work but I do think uh, a interior offensive lineman is probably one of the higher priorities on the Bucks if you were if you were like ranking what positions they'd be after after all of what we've seen in free agency I think that's one that they could still target okay and then I know that if anybody has watched any of these shows for <laughs> I know years, where you're you going know, with this Scott is an evangelist for cornerbacks <laughs> he is their spokesperson he gets on the stump for them and I imagine that the moment the Bucks traded away Carlton Davis you were like I have a reason did you to stump for my people did you notice last year that Carlton missed five games and Jamel Dean missed four or five games and thankfully the Buccaneers had spent a fifth round pick thankfully they'd listen to you on Zion McCollum and if we hadn't had him to step in and make I think nine starts last year I don't know where we would have been so again I'm sorry, this is what you're saying, but I'm going to say it again. You can never have enough cornerbacks. I'll probably put that on my tombstone <laughs> yes. when it's all said and done, but you can never have enough cor good cornerbacks. Mm -hmm. You always have cornerbacks, but you never have enough cornerback talent on a roster. And so I don't care what year it is. If you're picking late in the first round and there's a cornerback you really like there, got to think about it. Uh, and, and then, of course, the Carlton Davis trade makes that maybe even more of a priority. And one guy that's showing up a lot in the latter half of that draft is Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Really productive guy. Has a lot of the things that Todd Bowles likes in corners in that he's tall. He's got um, good wingspan. And he also has really good ball skills. And he's very, very fast. He ran the second fastest 40-yard dash at the combine amongst cornerbacks. As you can see on this tape, I think the one thing that maybe is dropping him to the lower half is that he's, he's got kind of a slight frame. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, smaller receivers and smaller cornerbacks, or at least thinner cornerbacks, have become a bit more in vogue in recent years. And if the Bucks like everything else about how he plays, that could be a guy that could be interested in. And, hey, we know you bring back a big hitter like Jordan Whitehead that maybe you're okay with your corners yeah. not necessarily long, having to be those guys. Yeah, as long as he's willing yeah. to tackle yeah. and help and run support. So we'll see. All right, and so that leaves us with edge, that this is a position yeah. that you saw the Bucks lose Shaq Barrett. Right. And we've seen that this is, a, I think, another position that you probably feel similarly to corner of where your depth, your oh, rotation, yeah. you can't have enough. Absolutely. That's 100% true. But also the release of Shaq does kind of make it seem more important. And this is a draft that doesn't necessarily have a guy like a Nick Bosa or somebody that it's expected to go in the top three. But it's got some pretty decent depth for the latter half of the second round. And a guy that um, is kind of impressive is UCLA's Leatu, Leatu Latu. Uh, it's a we have to draft him just for that. Just Not a lot name. of letters, but it's still a little <laughs> difficult to say. Um, the thing about Latu is he he went to the combine and he didn't blow away the tests because he wasn't really expected to because he doesn't necessarily have off the charts just you know like Chop Robinson has he killed it at the combine has off the chart athletic skills. Latu didn't necessarily test that well he tested fine he did well but he was just so productive that it's hard to ignore his production in college I believe he led the nation in quarterback pressures last year and that's a guy that the Bucks might be able to get in the second half of the draft 
first round of the draft. Maybe not. Maybe he rises just simply because his production was so good. But if he's hanging around there towards the second half, I, I think that's a guy they could target. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us on this edition of Road to the Draft. Again, we're doing this every week leading up to the draft as different things happen to see what the Bucks might prioritize and might do. So we'll see you next time.